the history of the show is very interesting because it started out in 1988 during the pitch season for 1989. So this was the summer of 88, which is 15 years ago. Um, I sold the show to Barry Diller, who was then running Fox. He ordered 13 in the room and then called back the next day and said, I must have been drunk. I, this isn't a Fox show. I'm not going to do it. So we then pitched it to CBS, who ordered a pilot, which they made. And then, again, I was assured that this is the best pilot we made this year. It's on. It's on the schedule. The night before the schedule was announced, I got a call saying, no, it was not on the schedule. But uh, Kendall Masters, who was then president of the CBS, had decided that there were no breakout stars, which I couldn't disagree with. That was not the design of the show. Um, so it wasn't picked up by CBS and became an orphan. And it was really Carrie McCluggage, who was the president of, NB of uh, Universal Television, who said, look, I'm not going to let this show die. I said, well, good luck, because I don't know who we're going to sell it to now. And uh, I had a very good relationship with Brandon Tartikoff at NBC. And Carrie was the one who said, let's take it into Brandon. I said, well, you know, nobody likes buying people's leftovers. It almost never works, especially in the development process. They'll want to redevelop it. And he said, well, let's see, because, you know, Brandon sometimes does things that nobody else will do. So we screened it over there, and uh, everybody hated it except Brandon, who really liked it. And... Uh, he said, but how are you going to do this every week? You know, where are the stories going to come from? And I told him that the Bible for the show was the front page of the New York Post and give me six episodes to write. And uh, when you read them, you'll order the show. And that's what we did. We wrote six episodes, which to me is a sidelight, but is a much more intelligent way to make a decision about a series or anything than doing a pilot, which is merely an expression of unreality in terms of whether you can do this every week. So Brandon ordered the series, and we started shooting it in March of 90 for the fall. We were finished by the middle of July or beginning of July, which was a great luxury because I think the original air order was like 8, 4, 11, you were, we were able to look at all 13 episodes and decide which should go on first, which should flow into the, the next episode, which is a, a luxury that you never have under a standard development process, which is secondarily another reason why I hate pilots and won't do them anymore. I do remember one story about the pilot, though, about why you, should, you really didn't want to be shooting in 16, that we finished the pilot and we were showing, we were you seen the cut for the first time, the finished picture, the answer print. And we were screening for CBS at 10 o'clock Monday morning. And at 4 o'clock Friday afternoon, we looked at the answer print. And film's rolling. My eye went like that, the first cut. And then my eye went like that, the second cut. And there was a flash between every splice. There was a flash frame. And this wasn't strung together. This was an answer print. And I said, what the hell is going on? And it turned out that because it was shot in 16, and in 1990 nobody had shot in 16 for 20 years out here, that the printer did not have enough pressure to hold the two, the, the two pieces of film together at the splice, and there was a flash frame. And it cost something, and this is, don't forget, this is 14 years ago, 13 years ago, something like $40,000 to have it reprinted over the weekend because they had to redo every splice in the film. That was kind of coronary city. You don't know what it's like, especially in something with a lot of cuts in it where your eyes are like, boing, boing, boing. You know, it was not the way to sell. We didn't sell it anyway, but it probably wouldn't have helped. 